My name is Mike Branch, and I've been at UNR since 1995. And I'm from Virginia originally. My PhD is from the University of Virginia. And my first job as a professor was actually in Miami. I was at Florida International University for a couple of years. And that was fun, doing a lot of interdisciplinary work in American literary studies and also environmental studies. So I was there for a couple of years, and then I came out here to Nevada in 1995. And uh, it's just been a wonderful experience to be out here. And I can tell you more about some of the areas that I work in, but I continue to travel a lot, and I work in American Lit, Environmental Lit, Humanities, Film Studies, Humor Studies, Creative Writing, so I'm interested in lots of stuff. As an undergraduate, I was really interested in the natural sciences, and uh, like a lot of English majors, thought I would grow up to be a scientist. So, yeah, I was interested in biology for a long time as an undergraduate, and I also just loved literature, but especially literature that was about the natural world. So one of the reasons I got interested in American 19th century literature was there's just so many writers working in that period, Emerson, Thoreau, Hawthorne, Melville, Poe, Whitman, Stowe, Dickinson, lots of people who were really interacting with the natural world in new ways that were super important to the culture at that moment. So I kind of got interested in the study of physical environment through the sciences and the study of the physical environment through the arts and humanities and ultimately sort of blended those interests by becoming a guy who is interested in American literature, especially earlier American literatures, but with a real focus on nature, place, and environment. Yeah, I think what I like most about teaching is not doing the same thing over and over. So uh, in recent years, I've been getting really interesting, interested in integrating film studies with literary studies, taking a broader kind of cultural studies or American studies approach. So I think I'd have to say that in the last few years, my, I've had the most fun teaching things that include digital media, include film in some way. So I teach a course, for example, on film and history, looking at the way Hollywood films represent but also distort American history. I teach a class on adaptation theory where we look at American novels and then multiple film versions of them to see how stories get told in these different media. I teach a course on Ameri major American directors. So although I'm a lit geek at heart, I would say that you know the most fun I've had in the classroom in recent years has been teaching courses that have something to do with film. And even when I teach a class like Literature of the American West, you know, I'll braid in some cinema studies as well so people can sort of compare how representations of our region have occurred in literary texts and then also in cinematic texts. I think that's absolutely natural. It's sort of fundamental to the humanities that the culture kind of tells us uh, that they're not really sure what we'll do with these skills that we've developed. And part of what's been really fun about working with students is seeing this amazing variety of things that they do with degrees in the arts and humanities. So, it's not as if teaching is the only thing people go on to do. So yeah, I would say I was stressed out about it. I think that kind of vocational anxiety is pretty natural. But I also think you just sort of have to have faith that if you're pursuing things that you care about, it'll lead to something important. So our students here at Nevada who've majored in English have gone on to do just everything you can imagine. I mean, advanced graduate programs in all kinds of fields, just a, a wild array of fields. But also, you know, they're in activism, they're in public lands management, they're in editing and publishing, they're in education, you know, they're in nonprofits, they're just, they're in politics. You know, they, they use the skill set that they learn here, which involves critical thinking, analysis, communication. It's not just about the content, it's about the sensibility of the skill set that we develop here. So this all sounds good now. So the answer is yes, I was worried and scared myself. But I really think that the range of fields and jobs that people go into with the skill set they develop here is pretty amazing. In my experience, when you ask especially older people about how did you end up doing this thing, they have these very well worked out narratives. Well, I did this and then this and then this. And retrospectively, it all seems really logical and engineered and worked out and preconceived. And that's really not how life works. So, you know, I sort of think of it as this garden of forking paths. You're, you're sort of moving through your life, making choices as best you can as you go. And when you look back, you have to craft a narrative that causes all of those individual choices to hang together and make sense. But it's like writing a novel about yourself. It's a sort of organizing fiction. So 
you know, I, I can say honestly that I love this work and that I love it so much that it now seems difficult for me to imagine having done anything else. But the fact is, all along the way, there were forks in the road where I thought, well, maybe I'll go to law school instead of graduate school in English, or maybe I'll become an environmental activist or journalist instead of becoming a professor, or maybe I'll focus in one area instead of another. Um, so I, you know, I feel called to work that I care about, but I think it's not very honest to make it sound like the path was always clear before me, no. I'd say the important thing is to uh, not let your pragmatism overcome your passion. You know, it's really easy to try to engineer all the steps in your life according to what you think you should do next. And sometimes it just requires having the courage to sort of be spontaneous and follow things that feel important to you, even though you're not exactly sure where they're going to lead. And it seems to me like that's one of the things that's great about the arts and humanities is it's sort of a process of discovery. And sometimes the process is more important than the product or the outcome. I mean, obviously, we all have choices to make. We have to be pragmatic. But I think figuring out what you really love doing and then to the degree you can, making choices that lead you toward that, I don't know. I just sort of, maybe I got lucky that it worked out for me. But most of the people I know who followed their passion uh, have found a way to make it work for themselves. So I, I think that's inspiring. There are a lot of paths to success.